Welcome to the Mac Cave, home of retro gaming news today. Welcome everyone down to the Mac Cave and tonight we're in the newsroom to cover some of the biggest stories you need to know about in the gaming world. We are going to head down into our newsroom and cover the big stories of the day. I'll see you over there. In the world of Green Hill Zone, they're expecting to experience high winds as Sonic is in training for his latest entry in his film franchise. The third Sonic the Hedgehog movie is in the making as we speak, and they are looking to top the previous two. And that's actually a big thing to say because those first two films did far better than anyone expected, especially the first film which began in controversy. We all remember the nightmare fuel that were the human teeth on Ugly Sonic. Well, Paramount and the rest of the studios were listening and they actually delayed that film to improve it and give fans what they actually wanted from that character and we ended up getting an outstanding version of Sonic the Hedgehog which then continued into the sequel with more characters from that franchise including Tails and Knuckles. With the third entry set to premiere, we are going to get more characters from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Some a little less known than others, but there is a villain character that lots of Sonic fans are looking forward to, and that is Shadow. Will the movie do as well as the prior two? Only time will tell, but I can tell you this, Sonic the Hedgehog is ready. He has been in training, he is doing everything he can to make the best film possible for all of the Sonic the Hedgehog fans. And with his direct competition having their own movie right around the corner, it's going to be a high bar to reach. The Super Mario Brothers movie is set to premiere and is going to hit theaters, and the trailers have already been outstanding. Now this is a film that has already started off with a little bit of its own controversy, its own uh, anger from some fans based on the casting of the film. A lot of fans have voiced their opinions about having Chris Pratt voice Super Mario. Personally, I have no problem with it. I'm no stranger to his voice changing. In fact, most of my life, Captain Lou Albano was the voice of Mario for me. So, I can understand where people are coming from with that, but I think Chris Pratt is going to do a great job. That said, the one I am most looking forward to is Jack Black as Bowser. But what do you guys think? What do you think about the upcoming Super Mario Bros. movie? And do you think Sonic the Hedgehog stands a chance with his follow-up film to his own franchise? I'm really looking forward to Sonic, though. I don't know about you guys. I really love those first two films. The second one, I think, was even better than the first. I'm going to see it in theaters. How about you guys? Switching over to the land of Hyrule. Vandalism. Reports of vandalism are coming in from the kingdom of Hyrule. Citizens of the land are reporting that their crops have been cut down, and in nature preserves, natural barriers have been burned, left in ash. In fact, one citizen of Hyrule has reported that his door, which was made out of a bush, was completely destroyed by fire and he demands that damages be paid. The king of Hyrule is looking into this, but they have no real leads until earlier today where this photo was taken by a resident of Hyrule. If you have any information regarding who this possible culprit could be, please let us know down in the comments. We need to save Hyrule from all of this vandalism. They've had enough to deal with, with Ganon sending his moblins in and all kinds of different creatures, and now we have someone who appears to be wearing a green tunic just going around and destroying people's property. So, he must be stopped. You think the culprit in the green tunic will be brought to justice. The King and Princess Zelda are looking into it actively. In other Nintendo news, Samus is back on modern consoles in the form of a remaster of the 2002 GameCube classic Metroid Prime, the physical edition released today. This remaster is absolutely gorgeous. It was done so well, I've already started playing it. Now, this release is only the first Metroid Prime. 
but back on the GameCube, that series became a trilogy. Metroid Prime spawned two sequels, and eventually those sequels were ported to the Nintendo Wii in a trilogy bundle. And the Metroid Prime trilogy is a fantastic series that, depending on the success of this initial remaster release, that will determine whether or not Part 2 and 3 get the same remastered treatment. Last year, we did get Metroid back in the news with Metroid Dread landing on the Nintendo Switch. Again, a very successful entry in the Metroid franchise, and I think Metroid Prime is going to further the success of that franchise. Back on the GameCube when the initial one was released, fans were nervous because this was a transition from a 2D puzzle scrolling game to a first-person shooter. No one knew what to expect, but it worked out really well and it became an iconic classic on that system. If you haven't played Metroid Prime, now's your chance to pick it up on the Nintendo Switch where you can play it on your TV screen in dock mode or play it on the gorgeous handheld mode of the Nintendo Switch OLED. Are you fans of Samus? Are you fans of Metroid? This character has been in multiple games, including spin-offs like Smash Brothers. Some people were introduced to Samus for the first time in Smash Brothers. One of my favorites of all time, and I'm looking forward to playing this game all the way through once again, and we'll definitely be streaming it down here in the Mac Cave. IDW Publishing has announced that they have a comic book miniseries coming in the form of a five-issue set, set to release this May, featuring two franchises that will collide for the first time, and I think fans are going to be thrilled. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles vs. Street Fighter is set to release from IDW Publishing in May, featuring five issues of the two franchises colliding. This is going to mark a, another step where they've had these crossovers with Street Fighter. The Ninja Turtles have crossed over with DC before in the form of Ninja Turtles vs. Batman, and Street Fighter has many crossovers as well. But these two franchises coming together, based in the fighting game genre, is going to be incredible. As you recall, the Ninja Turtles did have their own fighting game known as Tournament Fighters, which was on the NES, the Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis. That game is one of the hardest fighting games I've ever played. I usually prefer to play Street Fighter over that one. But to see these two franchises collide is going to be a ton of fun. The CEO of the company mentioned, whether you're a diehard fan of both franchises or have an affinity for one or the other, this book is going to blow your mind. Paul, Ariel, and Sarah have crammed every ounce of fun into each page and every fight will have fans biting their nails. But it doesn't stop there as the TMNT face off against Street Fighter Legends to prove who's truly the best at kicking butt, both teams will learn there's something more nefarious afoot. We at IDW are incredibly stoked to partner with Capcom to bring two of the most popular fighting teams together in this massive matchup. I think this is going to be intense. I can't wait to get my hands on these issues. I think if this mini-series of comics is successful, we could actually see this transition into video games. Maybe we even get a new Ninja Turtles fighting game, Tournament Fighters Remastered or Reimagined, something along those lines that can bring these characters back into the fighting genre. The Ninja Turtles did have an appearance though back in Injustice 2, a DC fighting game featuring the DC Universe, and the Ninja Turtles were available as DLC. So it's not out of the realm of possibility to bring these characters together into a fighting game again on modern consoles. But will you be picking up the comic series to see how this story turns out? I have a feeling that they may start with fighting. I think these guys are going to need to team up. Could you imagine Leonardo and Ryu teaming up to lead these teams together to fight against the Foot Clan? What if the Foot Clan teams up with M. Bison? There's so many possibilities out there with this, and I was so excited to learn this story earlier today. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know in the chat what you think. Which is your favorite fighting genre? Which is your favorite fighting game? And who are your favorite characters from both of these franchises? In any of these fights, who do you think would win? I mean, can Leo take on Ryu? I don't know. It'd probably be a pretty close fight. <laughs> I think Raph takes on Blanca, though. That's what I'm thinking. I want a Raphael versus Blanca fight. And that is the news of the day in retro gaming. 
We're going to have more stories for you next week in Wayback Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining me down here for your retro gaming news today. I'll see you over in the Mac Cave. <laughs>